Hello. I recently picked up this box of old computer cassettes, and I thought that this would be quite a useful thing to have because it's, uh, I say, it's a source of old computer cassettes that I can use for my own purposes, but also it comes in a handy box that I can use to keep my existing selection of computer tapes uh, all neatly organised. Uh, but I was also interested to see what exactly is on these tapes already. So I thought I'd have a go at uh, loading some. Now, I don't have an old computer that I can load uh, programs from from tape, uh, but I do have this Sega Master System, and I had been working on a version of BBC Basic uh, to run on it, and that is compatible with the Acorn tape format. So I was quite pleasantly surprised to find that these tapes are indeed in that Acorn format. So here I go, I'm going to load a tape in, hit the play button on there, switch to the tape file system, and type load speech marks. Oops. And that will search and that will load the first program that it can find uh, on the tape from the current position. So uh, let's have a look and see what is on there. Loading split screen. Now, a program with the name of split screen sounds like it's probably going to do something clever and device specific. Of course, this is a Sega Master System. It is not an Acorn computer. It's not a BBC Micro or an Electron or uh, anything like that. We can have a look at the program once we've loaded in and see if there's any chance of getting it to run. There we go, it's loading in block by block. Seven blocks, eight blocks, nine blocks, there we go, ten blocks in hexadecimal. So not a very big program, but let's have a look at that if I list it. Okay. So it's calling star effects, so it's calling some sort of device specific routines. I don't know if I've implemented that one. Store. See, it's got some sort of, oh, it's got star key commands in there, which I haven't implemented because there's not enough RAM to store the key mappings. This does not look very promising that it's going to run on here. I mean, I can try running on it, but I imagine it's just going to bad command at line 10. So it isn't even just like a single row of asterisks. So uh, this one doesn't look too hopeful. But let's let's try the next program on the tape. See if we have any any better luck with that one. Let's see what's this next one going to be. Fireworks. Well, that sounds more visually interesting than a split screen. Two blocks, three blocks. It's a small program as well. So uh, let's have a look. See what goes on in here. So if I list that, okay, looking through there, well, it's quite a small program and it doesn't seem to have any sort of uh, you know, star commands that are calling uh, anything sort of machine specific and it doesn't have any uh, 6502 assembly in there. What I did notice is right at the top of the program, let's just say, there we go, uh, remark to be debugged. So presumably this program doesn't, doesn't actually work in its current state, but uh, let's see if we can get it running anyway. So let's just try run. No such function or procedure at line 140. What's that? Proc F. Well, I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to switch back to mode zero. It'll be a bit easier to debug with more text on the screen. So that was line 140, proc F. Is there a proc F in here? Uh, so I'm going to do list, and then I'm going to search for anything with a def keyword in it. Well, there is define proc F. It's interesting, it's inset slightly. Not quite sure what's going on there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to edit line uh, 1100, like that, bring that up in the editor. I'm just going to hit enter on there so it will just retokenize it. And if I just uh, do that again, you see that's now a line on the left, so I think there's something slightly squiffy going on with that before. Let's try running that again. Oh, well, that started doing something, but now we've got a syntax error at line 170. What's line 170? Proc F, uh, X 2%, Y 2%, cosine A times 50, sine A times 50, sine, just sine on its own, 9999 F. Okay, well, what is Proc F? What's its uh, function definition? That's sort of X to X2, wait, Y 2 to Y, cosine A times 50 to XM percent, sine A times 50 to YM. So that one's an integer, that one's not an integer. Uh, G, which is sine, nine, okay. 
yeah, there's this sign here. It doesn't seem to go anywhere, but we've got one more argument than we really need. So maybe if I just edit line 170, I'm just going to get rid of that sign because that doesn't seem to do anything. Let's try running that now, see what happens. I'm not sure why it says E, comma, E in the top left hand corner, but we do seem to be getting some sort of fireworks. Oh, and there's another one. So it is drawing points on the screen. That's looking pretty fireworky. Let's see, does this just run forever? Still baffled by this e comma e at the top. Okay, and another, another bigger one up at the top. Sparks from the fireworks. Ah, and then a nice little palette cycling effect. Um, yeah, with the with the border colour as well in here, going a bit mad. Yeah, so we do seem to have this spurious line up the left here, and that e comma e in the top left hand corner. But apart from that, that's quite a nice little fireworks program. I rather like that. So uh, I like the way that it uh, changes to a different colour as well in the animation. Okay. Well, let's have a look. Let's break that and then let's have a look. Where is it? Where is this E coming from? Uh, this, I'm sorry. Load color color VDU 1915.00 VDU. So it's doing something there. Okay, one hundred line 130, I think that is switching the cursor off, if I remember correctly. What's line 120 trying to do? Can't remember the number of arguments. So what's the ASCII character for E? It's 6, 9. Uh, I wonder, because 69 is used to draw the points. Actually, I'm just going to edit line 120. I'm just going to comment that out for now, just to see if that's anything to do with the... Okay, well, that's uh, that's definitely not the way to do it. What's going on here? Probably should have a reference in front of me. Maybe line 130 is the one that's causing the screw-up. Let's uh, edit line 120. So I haven't looked at uh, this version of BB Space for a very long time. I'm very rusty. Yeah, I'm just going to just comment that out and run that. Aha, now we no longer have that. I think that's the way to do it. Okay, so there's something, either a byte left over or not enough bytes sent to that VDU command. Let's uh, see what this looks like when it finishes drawing. Unfortunately, it's in a small window in the uh, the middle of the screen because the uh, Sega Master System doesn't have enough video RAM to have a 16-color uh, screen mode that fills the entire uh, fills the entire display. But there we go. Okay, so that doesn't have that uh, nonsense up in the top left-hand corner now and that line down the side, but. Yeah, that's a that's a neat little effect. Ah, well, I'm going to carry on going through this through this box of tapes. See if I can find any more fun programs that uh, maybe don't uh, rely on six five zero two assembly or specific features of the BBC Micro. But uh, yes, well, thanks for watching.